dinner, it wasn't dinner. And, uh, and then I don't really quite think of myself as a man so much. And then I'll, I'll say to them, do, do you think it's a big turn-on to me that I'm running around the house doing this stuff and you're watching the football game? And I'll say, I think it is, is it? <laughs> but I, I think, um, apropos to, maybe it was your, your question, um, in more homophobic societies, right, people then become very uh, questioning of, what well, you know, am I really a man? Am I really, it was your question, right? Um, right Could because, they mean, am I really a man who loves women, not, or am I a man who loves men? But they don't necessarily question, am I a man? Well, oh, mm, yeah. no, 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 you, you, get, you get like a real nice old school Latin from South America, uh, and yeah, if, if, uh, uh, if, he, if he got a kick out of uh, doing the wash while his boyfriend was watching the Jets game, uh, he'd be asking himself, am I really a woman? And this guy was born in VR. Not in terms of gender identity, just in terms of a statement? No, 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 no. Uh, Could you repeat it when he just said I didn't hear it? I'll, I'll let you repeat it. He's asking if he's yeah. really a woman. Are we talking about gender identity specifically, or are we talking just about him making an accusation about, well, this is a woman's job and I'm going to do No, no, I, I, w I would say uh, in, in the right society, in the old school, uh, uh, Women hating, you know, homo hating. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you, you definitely come across people who would uh, be asking themselves, that I, I, I really must be a woman. I can't, I can't be a man because men don't do these things or men don't like these things. Right? Well, that's what I was going to ask about. <laughs> Lately, there's been so much in the papers about transgenderism. Vogue had had an had a seven-page spread where they had. Did you see it? I, I didn't see it. They had transgender couples. And in the New York Times uh, this week, there was a talk about transgender, transgender people too. And there was one couple that were very devoted to each other. And she started out as a woman and turned into a man. And he started out as a man and turned into a woman. And they are together now. Fair enough. You know, um, so what I want to ask you, talking about fluidity and boundaries and so, where does being gay, either lesbian or homosexual, where does being gay and wanting to be transgender, what is the curve on that? I mean, how related are they? Is it, are all gay people, maybe do they secretly wish they were of another sex? Uh, per per personally? Uh, I, I feel like I have my cake. I have my cake and I can eat it too, right? Because uh, I, you know, I get the privileges of a man, right? Uh, I, per, again, personally speaking, this is, this isn't universally true. Um, uh, I, the I like being with men. I like being with men who are masculine, and I like masculinity. Um, that, you know, I, I, I don't think that's universally true. You know, different people have different experiences. And they'll say, oh, well, you know, what being gay to me uh, means is I like being able to be a man who's ladylike, or I like other men who are ladylike. Um, I, I don't know the answer to your question. Well, the bottom line, again, is there ain't no categorization. Mm -hmm. Like a friend of mine who certainly looks totally masculine, and he's a trainer, and he's talked about liking to wear skirts and things. And I said, have you ever wished that you were a woman? Oh, no. He's very clear that he's glad he's a man. He would just like to be able to wear skirts. Yeah, most of the transvestites I've worked with have no desire to have a sex change. Right. They are happy being men. They just have yes. to like, they get different kinds of pleasurable experiences dressing as women. But it's not a desire to be a woman. The same is true of most of the gay men I know. They don't express any desire to be a woman. They like being men, having sex with men, not pretending they're a woman, having sex with women. Well, that answers my question, yeah. you said. Mm -hmm. 
to a certain extent. They're not, in other words, people who are gay are not necessarily transgender. No, definitely. There isn't a, conti there isn't a continuum. That's a different category totally. If, if, if you want to reassure yourself by saying um, it's a totally different category, um, that's good. Um, I don't personally need to reassure myself. I want intellectual Are there no category? Yeah. It's, yeah. But yeah, there are two different concepts. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they intertwine yeah. and sometimes they don't. Right. No. I mean, that, that's, I that's, think that's well said. A few other ways that it's been presented to me is there's sort of, and I won't remember all of them, but there are kind of like five continuums. So you have your biological sex, and that could be on a continuum. Um, you have your uh, sexual orientation, who you're attracted to, which or could or what, or or what, which could be um, on a continuum as well. And and I think our continuum model is going to start splitting off too. Um, but continuum is better than binary or or more comprehensive, I feel. And then you have um, your your gender, which is I feel like a woman. I identify as a man, and that can be on a continuum. Um, and then you have your expression, what you actually express. Um, so I, I, I might feel like, you know, a total woman, that's what I identify with, but express as male. For example, um, uh, I'm thinking about a person who's currently incarcerated, prefers the, uh, identifies as transgender, um, prefers the male pronoun in the current context of incarceration, and presents more male. Um, because he's incarcerated. Um, but if he was out on the street, it would be a very different presentation and a, a different pronoun selection. Um, but because, because of circumstances. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so looking at like all these different sort of vectors or whatever, and then appreciating a diversity and a continuum and a variance within those vectors, um, is, is one way that helps me conceptualize it, and that's sort of one of the ways I was taught. Um, one of the other really interesting things is when these vectors collide. So, for example, if you do have someone who's transitioning um, from male to female, and they're in a relationship with someone who identifies, let's say, as female, um, are they then transitioning to a heterosexual? Mm -hmm. um, how does that yes, affect their orientation? Know, right? And then how does that affect their partner's orientation? Because I married a man, I identified as a gay man, and now that man is transitioning and identifies as a woman. Am I not straight? Uh, how did that happen? I still love this person. I'm and then um, one of the other things is, is, to really throw it in the mix, is preserving um, reproductive rights um, when thinking about transitioning, especially when we talk about children and youth. Who, who, um, but even older folks who are transitioning um, or considering transitioning, how do I, like I might identify and, and want to transition externally and internally as to a woman, but maybe I still want to have the option of children um, with a biological link. How do I preserve that? Um, that's when you go really deep diving. Well, no, um, but it's, these, it's, these are yeah. very, very complicated yeah. questions. Uh, and uh, you know, my uh, what, I, what I'm reminded of is a graduate student I was supervising. Uh, she she was very angry because there was a case in the clinic uh, where somebody was being treated for um, their gender dysphoria, mm -hmm. and uh, so the the goal of the treatment this wasn't her case uh, was to um, Get them aligned with the physical reality, and she, you know, she can't do it. She, you know, she, you know, she was just furious. Um, uh, you know, there's a there's a cure for this. They can have a sex sex reassignment surgery. Right? Uh, it's, it's a very painful and difficult uh, you know, thing, expensive, um, dangerous thing to do. Um, and my response was, uh, or they could. Uh, uh, like themselves as uh, somebody with a man's body who experiences himself as a woman. I don't, you know, I, 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 I don't think that somebody necessarily has to get that uh, aligned unless, you know, they, you know, they really have the experience of, you know, yikes, I am just in the wrong body. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because 
my particular client can't stand a reference to anything female about himself. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the older yeah. Latin. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's a different one. That's a different one. I, I, one have, one I, I have a hard time remembering your whole case. <laughs> 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 this, is, this is the one who's transitioning from female to male. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And I made a reference to a part of a fe of female anatomy. Right. And, yeah. you know, really strong reaction. Yeah. So I, you know, found a euphemistic way of doing it. But the feeling was that intense. Yeah. Um, I've been in the situation a couple of times where um, there's not somebody questioning their own sexuality. But it's, it's a partner questioning their partner's sexuality. Oh, and, and what is their if they've discovered something about their fantasy life, what is that going to mean? Is it, is it what they quote unquote really want or does it reflect something more emotional? I'm thinking in particular of a woman I saw a few years ago and her boyfriend was into some um, pornography that involved pre-op transsexuals. So, the, yeah, and she wanted to know what this meant. Right, it made, made her nervous, right? Yeah. yeah, and she wanted to know what this meant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there wasn't an easy answer for that, especially since I wasn't doing therapy with, with, the, with boyfriends. the partner. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think oh, I always think that's also interesting because you know there are many fantasies that people talk about as quote unquote not what they want in real life. For instance, women who have rape fantasies. Exactly, right. Would rather that, not be raped, right? Right. But, um, yeah. Even though that may be a, a primary focus mm -hmm. of their pornography or their mm -hmm. Erotic or the fantasy right, exactly, life. Okay. Exactly. And it doesn't necessarily mean that's what they want to translate. But then again, I can imagine many situations where somebody would look at pre op transsexuals or something else, and that actually might be something that they really want. So I don't think that they're. Uh, so for me, when I've encountered patients, I haven't had um, as much experience with. You know, what do I do? What am I? As much as what, what does this mean? Yeah, you know, what does this mean for, for if my partner is into this? Right. Yeah. What I would say means your partner is into this. Um, um, a, a fascinating read, if um, uh, anybody wants to, is um, a book by um, a fellow called named Agi Agas, uh, A Billion Wicked Thoughts. And um, there, there's some criticism of his research methodology, so I'm not, I'm not sure uh, whether we can go by his findings. But what he attempted to do is collect a billion, you know, um, entries on the internet, right, at porn sites, and see what people look at, right. And one of the interesting things is that. A lot of things that we think of as rare and distorted and unusual and peculiar uh, are way more common than, than you imagine. So, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know how many of you have treated people with foot fetishes, but apparently 40% uh, for, of people, 40% uh, of men are, you know, um, think that the, a woman's foot is, you know, like the hottest thing in the world. If, if it really is 40%, you can't. You know. um, and um, what, what, he, what he terms uh, she-males, you know, so somebody with uh, sexual characteristics of both uh, men and women, uh, are, um, I, I, I forget the, the numbers, but again, um, you know, it's not an unusual oddity. A lot, a lot of men look for that on the internet. And I've heard men in my practice uh, describe it as you know the best of both worlds, and and if you if you want to know what, according according to him, right, uh, what everybody is really interested in, penises. Apparently, everyone loves a penis, right? <laughs> right. Uh, we have time for one more question, and then we'll. Um, have a few minutes of sort of informal chatty, and then we'll shift to the board meeting, which everyone's invited to stay for. I just had one more comment to make. Uh, early. Oh, he said he said question. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I can perform it like yeah. a yeah. What is? How many have have studied sex therapy? How's that? 
Because I, I did that um, a few years ago. Oh, you're asking in the room? I found, mm -hmm. you're, you're asking in the room? How many, well, I, that was my oh. attempt to oh, make oh, okay. a question okay. out of my comment. And the answer is? <laughs> and the answer is, I, I, it, I found it invaluable to take a course in, in sex therapy. I did it at the NYU. At Langone? At, what? Did you do it at, at, at Langone? Yeah, okay. Right, right. Yeah. right. And it was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Virginia say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you I'm, teach I'm, it I'm, there? I'm, I teach there, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, it was great. And and I think it should be part of every therapist's I, education. I, I think so, too. Mm -hmm. I actually have a question. Oh, so, okay, so, so there was, there was, a, there was a, a comment. Okay, so, so we have, 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 with the things of accidents, but there's loss of the ego, aches and pains, threatened divorces, mm -hmm. um, with, with really bad consequences. I, mean, I, I, I work a lot with these, uh, these kinds of how, how, how much? I, I think it's a huge role. And um, for, for the most part, uh, uh, just in terms of um, uh, our profession, uh, this this stuff is being handled by physical therapists, and um, and I, I went to um, an international conference in Israel, uh, the International Society for Women's Sexual Health, and it's heavily dominated by physicians, you know, physician after physician after physician, uh, and then they wanted uh, the psychological perspective, and they turned to uh, a physical therapist. And, um, for the psychological? Yes. And it was yeah. a spelling problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and, and I, I, I think it's because we're, we're not, you know, there, there are people in our field in health psychology who could fit right into this with proper training and sex. So therapy. how do you explain that? How do you explain that? Um, how, how do I? Um, um, I mean, are there, are there more social workers? Oh my gosh! Yeah, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I could. Um, um, uh, I could probably name uh, all five uh, certified sex therapists or psychologists in uh, the Greater New York area. Okay. And uh, and only two of us are members of this. Wow. I was. Um, you and Peter. Me, me, me and Peter. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there are other there are other psychologists. Is it a training? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's it's training. Yeah, it's it's, it's not. Uh, to my knowledge, it's rarely if ever included in the gra graduate program. Right. Right. Um, How long does it take to get certified? Uh, I, you know, uh, I can tell you, it took me uh, 40 years. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was, I was, um, I was a grandfather, I was, you know, certified under unusual circumstances. Uh, so by virtue of uh, training and experience, um, and the right supervisors, you know, um, they said, okay, Ali, we'll, we'll call you a sex therapist. Uh, but I didn't go uh, along the usual the usual route. Uh, I, I, it would be too long. But there's, there's no reason why it couldn't be incorporated into the training. Um, uh, what, what people do is they go to the program I'm affiliated with at NYU, um, kind of like a postdoc. Uh, our, our program. Uh, I highly recommend it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How long is it? That, that, no, they just, they just, they just shortened. Yeah, they just shortened it to a year. It had been to your program. Oh, it should be longer. It should, it should be longer, right? Um, um, but uh, pe people do this kind of a postdoc, and that doesn't, uh, you know, the accrediting organization is the American uh, ASEC, yeah. right? And um, uh, e even our program at NYU. Uh, will only give you 32 CE, you know, being there 32 CE credits towards the certification, and I, I don't know how many 
Uh, I mean, it's a lot more than that. So I figured you'd do the, the whole thing. I didn't. I haven't gone for it. Yeah. It's yeah. just another thing. I've, I've eh, it's another thing. Yeah. I yeah. mean, one of I, I think one of the issues is that we have a generic license. So we can pretty much. They, they, they're, yeah, they're right I there. mean, that, that's not a bad thing. But um, you know, I, I would say that you know most most psychologists that I know would not want to change that. Uh, um, maybe, maybe <laughs> right. right. So uh, that if you want to do some area, of courses, <coughs> it doesn't necessarily require a certification as much as supervision or getting expertise in other ways. So, yeah, well, and, and so, but, so they may be doing sex therapy, but they're not certified. To do right, ex exactly. Uh, in September, I'm going to uh, speak to a group a little bit larger than this um, of uh, uh, sex therapists. Um, one or two of them certified. Uh, and they're all just calling themselves sex therapists right. under either their you know, psychology or social work or you know, we have five you know, uh, licensed professions. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how I don't know how that will all play out ultimately. Um, but uh, I'm I'm in favor of psychologists giving training in this and becoming becoming the experts in this. Yeah. And on that note, we will wrap up. I want to thank everyone for coming. Thank you very much. Also, I want to